today I wanted to address comments I also made regarding the vegan community. Essentially, I equated the vegan community to the carnivore community in that they are both exclusionary, restrictive nutrition philosophies that can create a disordered relationship with food and a vast amount of nutrient deficiencies because of the popularized methods of following those niche nutrition philosophies. Now, I'll go a little bit further and say, I think the vegans are just as crazy as the carnivores. <laughs> Mike Dolce has been asking for it now for a while. Most of you may not know who Mike Dolce is, but no worries, I'll fill you in. Mike Dolce is a former MMA fighter who really didn't find his calling in MMA. I personally thought he was actually a talented fighter, at least he possessed some talents while he did some MMA, but for some reason, he just couldn't put it all together. By no means am I bashing the guy. If anything, I respect the hell out of the fact that this guy was actually a professional MMA fighter and he actually gave it a good run. Like I said, but unfortunately, it just didn't really pan out in his favor, at least in MMA. It seems Mike Dolce transitioned over into giving nutritional guidance for individuals, but more importantly towards professional athletes who compete in MMA. I must say that I give massive kudos to Mike as he decided to make a slight pivot in his career with starting his training and nutrition consultation business, but it seems to be more of like a nutrition type of consultation business known as the Mike Dolce diet. Mike Dolce is a self-proclaimed weight management coach which I actually think is an accurate title that he has used for himself. But at this moment, I do think it is important to state the fact that a weight management coach and a health coach are not one in the same. Individuals can be in incredible shape or be at a healthy body fat percentage yet still have piss poor blood markers due to a number of reasons, but mainly due to diet and lifestyle factors that a that potentially at least that a weight management coach would not be able to diagnose or even realize unlike a professional health coach. Some of you may know this already, but I'm gonna say it anyways. This happens to be a common misconception with the gym bros and, and just the common public in general. You know, that assumption that if you look good and can perform well, you must be healthy. Right. Tell that to Bob Harper, Randy Couture, Charles Poliquin, and John Meadows. I'm sure they can tell you all about it. Even though they all had heart attacks and had animal-based diets, the cause was due only and solely to, you guessed it, genetics. Ah, oh, yes, the uh, genetics card. Never hesitate to whip that bitch out. When the opportunity presents itself, of course, when you are trying to justify something that you keep neglecting when talking about diet. It's always genetics that causes all your problems and never what you put into your mouth and swallow. That's what she said. Thanks, Mike. The only reason why I'm bringing all this up is because I legitimately think that someone like Mike Dolce would actually use this card in the event that an atherosclerotic event were to happen or something along those lines would happen to him or any of his athletes he trains, I seriously think that he would actually use this genetic card because he says absurd statements like this. Today, I wanted to address comments I also made regarding the vegan community. Essentially, I equated the vegan community to the carnivore community in that they are both exclusionary, restrictive nutrition philosophies that can create a disordered relationship with food and a vast amount of nutrient deficiencies because of the popularized methods of following those niche nutrition 
philosophies. And the bro science begins. Here we go. Strap in, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going in deep and hard. So a vegan diet can cause eating disorders and nutritional deficiencies. And of course, the professor has the audacity to compare a vegan diet which could be a whole foods plant-based vegan diet to a carnivore diet. Dear Lord. And if you've never witnessed one of these weight management or nutrition coaches take a wrong turn into a place they're not supposed to be traveling down, well, you just have. And tell me it doesn't look like that. I don't think we need to talk about how being vegan is not a diet, but as a quick summary, it's just an ethical and moral stance against any unnecessary enslavement, torture, death, and mutilation of animals. But for now, let's just try to make sense of this comment that Mr. Dolce just stated in terms of nutrition. So, a vegan diet can lead to eating disorders and nutritional deficiencies, according to Mr. Dolce, because it's restrictive. Sure. Does that look restrictive? What, what about that? That looks restrictive? And this? You, you, you really feel confined there, Mike? When you have all these options there? I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. Man, I must say, life isn't worth much of anything if you don't have some flesh, cow secretions, and chicken periods with everything you eat. You see, here's the issue. Mike thinks that a vegan diet can be restrictive because he himself has a restrictive mind. And he somehow conflates that with a vegan diet and then he preaches this nonsense to his clients, or at least I assume so, and anyone else who tunes into his channel. Let's also remember that he states that a vegan diet is very restrictive, which then therefore can actually be compared to a carnivore diet, which can cause like some type of eating disorder and nutritional deficiencies. Well, 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 that makes sense because you see, an, an omnivorous diet and a carnivorous diet must be fully adequate for health and isn't contributory to causing eating disorders or nutritional deficiencies at all. Oh, wait. There are about 30 million people in the US alone who suffer from an eating disorder or at least have some type of symptoms of an eating disorder and there are many millions of people who have nutritional deficiencies in the US. So here's the big question since vegan diets are so nutrient inadequate for someone like Mike Dolce as he preaches. Are all these people vegan? I mean, I would guess not since the amount of vegans in the US is currently less than 10% of the population. Well, I guess since I showed some signs that proves an omnivorous diet leads to nutritional deficiencies when in reality, the real reason why there are so many types of eating disorders and nutritional deficiencies in the US is potentially due to external factors like education, bad environments, social pressures from social media and brainwashing media and differing industries poisoning the minds of billions to get people to buy their products of exploitation. I mean, we're only talking about industries that are worth in the billions it never fails to just blow me away when people like Mike Dolce bring up vegan diets and how they can be nutrient inadequate for people to live when the majority of people in the US who have nutrient deficiencies or have eating disorders follow a typical diet that includes animal products. So I don't know where the fuck he's getting this shit from. Mike Dolce is one of those brainwashed individuals himself who cites no science to back up his statements, but still, never fails to make these claims that there is science to support what he says, but again, never shows it or even links it in the description box of his videos. You see, diets don't necessarily cause eating disorders. It's more, if you ask me, a psychological disorder that is grouped together with other external factors that are outside the understanding of Mike Dolce, or even me. You see, but it's all good because vegans conflate true science. By and large, the biggest failure of the vegan movement is the conflation of true science in that the vegans will point to a study of vegetarians. They will conflate that work 
to assume or infer that that has to also be reflective of a 100% vegan meal plan. Now, let's be clear. A vegan meal plan is 100% devoid of any animal product, period, the end. A vegetarian diet is not a vegan diet, and a vegetarian diet, in fact, is much more of an omnivoric meal plan than it is a vegan meal plan. What does that mean? Vegetarians, pescatarians, lacto-avotarians, most of the specific subgroups of the plant-based world also consume small to moderate amounts of animal-based products. So the vegans have been claiming the vegetarians for decades, when in fact, vegetarians are omnivores. Therefore, much of the science that the vegans point to that is based primarily on a vegetarian lifestyle has nothing to do with a vegan lifestyle. Is anyone still awake? I mean, it only took Mike like over a minute and a half to explain the difference between a vegetarian and a vegan diet. And apparently now he's also saying that vegans point to studies that conflate vegetarians with vegans together therefore it that's not real science or it's not good enough science and i would actually agree because we're looking at just a subgroup of a certain type of diet that being vegans but nonetheless he shows any type he doesn't show any type of evidence to back up what he's saying he's just running his mouth and telling stories this is very common when it comes to the way of the professor some of you may not be aware of this but this is a very very common trait so since mike dolce doesn't want to show any science no worries i'll, I'll do it for him we look at the health adventist 2 study which actually inhabits some of the longest living people on the planet over in loma linda california as it is one of the well-known blue zones on the planet as Mike Dolce likes to discuss and don't worry we'll bring up the blue zones and discuss that in a bit we see that vegans have a lower chance of hypertension diabetes all cancers and all cause mortality compared to the seventh day Adventists who follow a meat-based diet or have consume meat in their diet. And this is after controlling for certain factors like age, sex, race, BMI, physical activity, education, income, sleep, television, watching time, smoking, and alcohol consumption. To be fair, the researchers in this study did group vegans and lacto-ovo vegetarians when assessing metabolic syndrome risks, but I'm not even accounting for this in this one particular study because they group these two types of diets together. Either way, it's not difficult to read the study and independently assess the vegans and other eating patterns with different types of health risks, as I just stated, like hypertension, diabetes, cancers, and all-cause mortality, if you just simply read the study. Though I'm not sure what studies Mike Dolce is speaking about when researchers combine vegetarians with vegans and then vegans using those studies to prove that plant-based diets are healthier than omnivorous diets. I'm not saying those studies don't exist and the possibility of some vegans actually using those studies or using that type of flawed science if they're trying to say that vegan diets are healthier than omnivorous diets. I just don't know who Mike Dolce is talking about or what studies he's specifically talking about because he doesn't show any of them. He doesn't show any of the people who are stating this and he doesn't even talk about or show any of the specific studies he is claiming to have read or seen or whatever. He's just running his mouth. The most successful nutrition philosophy is that of the omnivore. And when I say an omnivore, I mean a whole food omnivore not a processed food eater, and it's much easier to be an omnivore eating whole food products, such as we suggest through the Dolce Diet principles, than it is to be a carnivore or a vegan, because we have such a wide variety of healthful whole food options that are excluded 
through the much more restrictive vegan and carnivore movements. Oh my lord, and people are actually paying this guy for nutritional consultations. Oh lord. So Mike is claiming a whole food omnivore based diet is the best because it has such a wide variety of healthful whole food options that are excluded in a vegan diet. Right. I've posed this question before, but I'm going to ask it again. What nutrients are exclusionary in a whole food plant-based diet exactly? And before anyone starts claiming B12, omega-3s, EPA, DHA, which are omega-3s, protein, iron, or whatever, whatever non-factual statement someone wants to bring up, I ask you that if you are one of those individuals, for the love of God, Please check yourself and do some damn research about B12 and Omega-3 and where it originates from because it does not originate from fucking animals. I am so tired of addressing these stupid comments that it just, that's, please just do your research. A properly planned whole food plant-based diet can provide a person with all the necessary nutrients and calories a person needs. A poorly planned vegan diet can lead to certain deficiencies just like any other poorly planned diet to include a healthful whole food omnivorous diet all right let's just use a little bit of common sense here if vegan diets were so exclusionary wouldn't we have vegans dying by the thousands every day or massive amounts of vegans being hospitalized for nutritional deficiencies I mean, wouldn't there be loads of scientific papers showing how dangerous vegan diets are for humans? I mean, we've only had vegans in the United States alone for decades now. I mean, can, can we please just put this issue to bed already? Because it's simply not true. A properly planned whole food plant-based diet can give you all the nutrients you need. If people would stop bringing this non-issue up every single time they talk about vegan diets, clearly, these people don't know what the hell they're talking about. Last I checked, the people residing in developed nations like the United States, which happens to be the nation where Mr. Dolce lives, are not dealing with massive nutritional deficiencies as a main cause of death or illness. It's cardiovascular disease, cancer, cerebrovascular disease, and diabetes when speaking in terms of nutritional health. These same chronic illnesses are the same sicknesses that an individual will be at less risk of acquiring if that individual follows a vegan diet as I showed in the Adventist 2 study. So nutrient deficiencies are not an issue when following a properly planned whole food, plant-based diet, or even just to be fair, any type of properly planned diet. And what's this comparison with the carnivore diet? The carnivore diet is for dumbasses who believe in like fantasy anecdotes are the answer to everything. Like on this, like Fugazi land is, you know, they're just like flying around in La La Land all day long to think that their diet is actually healthy and adequate for humans. Bunch of Fugazis over there, Fugazi. Veganism, on the other hand, is found on the premise of science, logic, and compassion, as we all know, at least as vegans know. I've actually covered this made-up fiction war between vegans and carnivores that is repetitiously brought up by people who happen to follow like this traditional eating pattern and don't really know the roots of each lifestyle. Make sure you click the link above if you wanna check out what I'm talking about where I break it down in a very digestible and comprehensible way. I promise you, if you watch it, you won't be upset unless you're a carnivore dummy. Okay, back to brass tacks here. So I've listened to a few of Mike Dolce's podcasts and I've seen a few of his videos here on YouTube and I must say that I was actually pretty surprised to hear the guy bring up the blue zones. I've seen zero data to date, zero data to date that shows any ill effect of wild caught animal products moderately mixed into your overall nutrition plan. And in fact, this is proven successful from the world's longest living populations to which we will just say blue zone because blue zone territories are very easy to look up. But of the people who live the longest and have the least amount of disease and illness during that time, by and large, they eat 
omnivore diets. So Mike has zero data on how wild caught animal products are bad for human health. Well, I would pose a question to Mike or anyone who would say such a thing. Has Mike seen any data showing wild caught animal products are actually healthy and good for human consumption? I would guess no since he's just assuming that animal flesh and animal secretions are healthy by default since he never shows any science to back up what he's saying. Typically when this type of question is asked, people will usually revert to the nutritional profiles of flesh and animal secretions while completely disregarding the harmful substances that are found in said products like saturated fat, dietary cholesterol, trace amounts of trans fat, AGEs, HCAs, heme iron, high levels of concentrated amino acids that promote aging and cancer, high levels of acidity, and a whole host of other substances that cause or promote disease. If you're wondering why animal products are not healthy for human consumption, no worries, you're in luck because I already created a playlist with a whole bunch of videos and science to back up why animal products are not healthy, check it out when you have a chance. So Mike makes the statement that animal products can be eaten in moderation or moderately with a variety of plant foods and brings up the people of the blue zones and how they have a omnivore style of diet when it comes to their eating patterns. So let's go ahead and look into that. The people of the blue zones actually have a longer life expectancy due to what researchers call the power of nine. The power of nine are nine evidence-based common denominators among the world centenarians and other individuals within these blue zones to slow the aging process. The power of nine encompasses nine different customs that individuals in the blue zones follow with respect to the region and traditions of their homeland. For example, people in the blue zones regularly move naturally by living in environments that force them to move naturally. They also have an emphasis on relieving stress called downshifting. They also have a strong sense of purpose in their life. They put their loved ones first. They have strong social circles that they stay together with for life and a few other customs that all these people in different areas of the blue zones follow which are the main reasons which contribute to their longevity. One of the most important customs in the blue zones is that these individuals in the blue zones follow a plant slant diet. The majority of their diet is plant based and they do eat animal flesh, but when they do, it's in very small quantities and it's not often at all. We're talking about eating meat five times a month. And when they do actually eat animal flesh or any type of animal products, it's somewhere in the range of three to four ounces. This is a very, very small amount of animal products and nowhere in the study does it mention that these people in the blue zones are living off of free range eggs or wild caught animal products and that's the secret to their longevity. So the question is, is it the 95% of plants that these people in the blue zones are consuming that is the main cause for the longevity or is it the 5% of animal products they do eat the cause of their longevity? Now I'm gonna admit here, I'm no mathematician, but last I checked, 95 is much greater than five, right? Either way, Mike Dolce's analogy of bringing up the blue zones is non-comparable because I'm sure he eats and his the clients he advises eat more animal products than five times a month and in greater quantities than three to four ounces at a time. I mean, it really is hilarious to see people like Mike bring this up as some sort of like vindication of eating animal products when the quantities are so small. Oh yeah, you see people because the blue zones, people in the blue zones, they, they eat meat, which means meat must be healthy and they live to like forever. I mean, it's just so silly. If, if Mike actually read anything or at least read a damn study or read the blue zones study, then he would actually would have come across the fact that the people in the blue zones also drink alcohol every day. Does that mean that alcohol is healthy? I mean, the guy and so many people like Mike just completely misrepresent or completely miss the point. These like failed attempts to promote on a omnivore style diet. And, and in this case, Mike was using the blue zones as an example and he failed. 
miserably. So ladies and gentlemen, I don't think the point can be driven home any further. And I think it's about that time. So Mr. Mike Dolce, here is your award. To conclude, I must say that Mike Dolce is most likely the least worse professor up to date as he does have a strong emphasis on plant-based nutrition, or at least he claims to have a strong basis or emphasis on plant-based nutrition. He claims to have a nutrition plan that is about 90% plant-based, which I find hard to believe because apparently the guy eats animal flesh multiple times a day. So I don't know if he's going by like based off weight or caloric consumption, I'm not sure. Either way, I don't think the guy is a bad person per se. I think he's he just hasn't taken a real logical and comprehensive dive into the principles of what veganism is from an ethical and health perspective. And the only reason why I bring up, bring up the ethical argument or the ethical perspective is because he's actually spoken about the ethics behind veganism very slightly or, or very quickly in a few of his videos before when he's talking about vegans. So just to be fair, that's why I brought it up. So congrats to Mr. Mike Dolce, the new professor of the month. I really do hope that I have to remove him in the near future from being a professor and I'll gladly do so. He'll be the first one to be a professor that has been removed from that honorable list, by the way, if he ever does plan to go fully whole food plant-based or vegan. But you know, I really don't think he will. But again, just to be fair, I hope I am wrong. So either way, that about wraps it up for now. Please let me know what you guys think in the comment sections down below. As you know, I love to engage with all of you. Please know that I appreciate every single one of you. Feel free to rate, subscribe, and hit the ding dong button if you haven't already. You guys know who I am. I'm the Natural Oxer. I wanna thank you for watching and please stay tuned for the next one.